Welcome back to our video module on dynamics. We've been looking at circular motion for some time, and that introduces us to an idea known as the D'Alembert's principle. I've included this video for reference because this principle is very easy to misuse and hence is not at all recommended as a general course of action for most types of problems. So we can imagine that we are rotating some rock about point O. It's flying around in, in some sort of, you know, circular path. But the difference between this rock and the ones we've looked at before is you're sitting on this rock. You're, you're uh, I guess, in yellow. And we've all been in some type of situation like this. And you feel, you feel like you're accelerating and that everything's pushing you this way. Many times we actually call this centrifugal acceleration. Our standard approach is to draw our normal free body diagram. We say that uh, we'll, we'll pretend we're this yellow point right here, and we have some tension on the rope. It's pulling this way. We'll call it T. And we simply do our sum of our forces equals our mass times acceleration. And we've been doing this you know, for some time we can go ahead and find out exactly what this is. Another way to interpret this experience is, um, I'm going to do this in red for danger because it's very easy to get things wrong, is we draw our free body diagram with fictitious forces. Fictitious forces. And it's a very good practice to make sure you include this caveat in all your problems if you decide to use it. We have some body here and there is still some tension. But in addition, we say in, once again, in red, in addition, we say there's some felt force going in this direction. And we'll say, force I because it's an inertial force. It's a felt force. When we use this approach, we say that the sum of the forces equals zero. This equation allows us to turn our fundamentally dynamics problem into a statics equation. On the left, we say that the tension is one of our forces and we add to it our inertial force. So in substance, the difference between these two is nothing. Over here, the way we normally do our free body diagrams, the mass times the acceleration is on the right. Here, the mass times the acceleration is on the left. But interestingly, note here that we have, we don't even have to worry about our signs. Everything just takes care of itself. Over here, when we deal with fictitious forces, we need to be very careful about proper signs. So in summary, this modified approach really just has two components to it. First, you draw your free body diagram with inertial forces or with fictitious forces. Secondly, you sum all the forces to zero. D'Alembert's principle is a different approach to free body diagrams where we can use our fictitious forces or our inertial forces to set up our equations of motion, but it also introduces a slightly more trickery, tricky sign convention, and for that reason we discourage its use. I hope this gives you a quick snapshot of how to use D'Alembert's principle properly.